So I've got some good news for you today. And this news, it's, um, it's not based on assertions. It's based on, uh, first of all, hard statistical facts. And then uh, I'd also say too, it's based on uh, things that I've observed my step myself, things that I would call anecdotes about the way I'm seeing people behave. So in short, um, people are waking up. <clears throat> and I think what we can all see is that what people are prepared to say is often very, very different from what they truly behave, uh, believe. Yeah, so what people say is different from what they truly believe, or it can be. Now, I think that this is the case with the bewilder beasts and the medical experiment. For reasons of ego, they're never going to admit um, that they were wrong, that they made a mistake. But that doesn't, but that doesn't mean that they haven't woken up. <clears throat> Instead, what I think we should do is to study their actions. So, in this case, what we're looking at is the number that turned up for the second, third, fourth, fifth round of the experiment. Because, make no mistake, the likes of um, Tony Blair, they were looking for people to attend um, the, the medical experiment, like, you know, once every six months at the minimum, and they were going to accompany it with um, the, the nat what I call the Nazi passport, you know? The, the, the passport that... Uh, well, your human, your basic human rights were were conditional um, on you taking part on uh, it, part in as many medical experiments as I said. Anyway, look, what happened was that the, that that take up rate dropped like a stone. So, although your next next door neighbour might not have said sorry to you uh, for for taking part in the medical experiment and doing what they did. Their actions show me that they have awoken to it. Like there were people, again, I'm not gonna kind of mention names because there's no, there's no point in it, but there were people who, who I respect, like so-called you know, YouTubers, who said, oh, they're gonna pull the same trick again. Um, you know, there was a Bill Gates as well. He was talking about the next one, <laughs> and then he did his funny little smile. Um, you know, with his, uh, with, with, um, I was going to say, <laughs> man, and then, <laughs> anyway, you shouldn't laugh at your own jokes, Linda. Um, yeah, but anyway, what was that? Was that, was that money box? If so, it fell flat on its backside about four times. So proving to me that although people aren't prepared to say, oh, Nigel, you, you weren't a conspiracy theorist after all, what you were warning us of actually turned out to be true. They won't say that, but what their behavior tells me is that they, they have learned and they have awoken. They're no longer compliant uh, with the agenda. And that's why we don't have um, the Nazi passport. That's why we don't have digital IDs. Um, we won a great victory in, in, in short. But look, I'm not here to talk about that. What I am here to talk about is, um, you know, something that's um, probably killed uh, far more people than the medical experiment. And what I'm talking about is, um, is is diet basically what we put in our mouths and um, you know for years and years and years we were told um, to go with uh, healthy carbs and um, avoid meat and dairy and, and eggs and, and, and all of that stuff and, inst and instead you know eat, um, eat, eat a breakfast cereal every morning you know get your oats in now what I'm seeing, again, people aren't talking about, they're not, they're not prepared to talk to you around the water cooler about how the NHS are a bunch, bunch of charlatans and GPs are self-serving. They won't do that because they're still kind of worried about, about being labelled a conspiracy theorist. But if you actually start looking at some of these people's actions, you can see that they, they have woken up. So... Uh, over here in Finland, um, 
there's been some stories in the newspapers, quite a few newspapers, about a shortage of minced meat. Now, there'll be people straight away, that the doomsters, let's call them, who will basically say, oh yeah, you know, what that shows is, um, oh yeah, they're getting rid of farmers, and so there's been a decrease in supply, and that's caused a shortage. Well, the problem with that uh, theory is that it's not true. What's actually been happening is um, there's been an increase in demand for meat in Finland. A meat, a meat is uh, already a kind of a staple over here. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. And also, as well, to an extent, there isn't the same sort of war on farmers. So, uh, for me as an economist, this is good. Um, I'll show you the news article now. I'm at the, uh, the Athletic Stroke Football Stadium. It's all getting refurbed, apparently. So yeah, higher prices for meat. It'll make uh, raising uh, pigs and uh, cows more profitable. So the free market will ensure that we get, we, we get more uh, of what we want, which is in this case, meat products. And so I also thought I would show you um, the type of food that's uh, that's been sold in Finnish supermarkets at the moment. So this is our, our local um, supermarket. And I think the first thing to notice here um, that for me reveals a consumer trend is just how much animal protein is being sold. So, um, you know, it's basically this whole front page is is all animal protein. Um, so we've got some some ribs at um, seven euros a kilo. So this is just something that drives me mad. Many Brits, they just assume that one euro equals one pound when it's not. Um, one pound buys one euro 20. So seven euros a kilo works out to five pound 60 a kilo. That's that's cheap, I believe, to get. That would certainly do me for one day's food. Um, you've also got this fatty pork, uh, Kassler. This is something that seems to be unique to Finland. Um, really, really tasty. Uh, a kilogram, again, is six euros or four pounds 80. Uh, an outrageous steal here is uh, rainbow trout. So that's 16 euros a kilo, which is 12 pounds 80 a kilo. So, you know, again, um, a kilo of high quality animal protein that's going to do you a lot of good. Um, you've got some uh, outer fillet of, of pork, um, seven euros a kilo, five pounds sixty a kilo. Uh, a herring, um, so that's seven euros a kilo, five pounds sixty. So uh, you know something that I would say is that food, if it, it is possible to buy good quality food at at very very low prices, and I think there's a guy that I watch on YouTube. Um, who Real Ale Craft Beer his channel is, and he occasionally does food reviews, and um, he just gets ripped off buying processed carbohydrates and complains then about the price of food. The thing is, is that I, I believe you can buy good quality food yourself and just cook it from scratch, high quality animal protein, and it's cheap. So this is from um, Lidl. Um, so um, you've got pork, uh, fill it again, uh, five euro seventy nine. Uh, that's for seven hundred grams, four pound sixty. Um, again, you've got some uh, pork cassler uh, per kilo, nine euros a kilo, seven pound twenty a kilo. Got you know maybe get a knife out and cut it and cook it and stuff. Um, you've got um, beef. Um, 22 well 23 euros a kilo 18 pounds 40 absolutely fantastic you've then got this other shop um local supermarket um so uh salmon fillet um 13 euros a kilo that's 10 pounds uh, 40 a kilo so again that's a family of you know 
three of the three a fab for a family of three that's a meal isn't it yeah for, for that much you can spend that in one sort of stupid burger meal at some fast food restaurant um you've got chicken breasts uh 600 grams seven euros a kilo five pounds 60 that works out to um so you've got some smoked lamb uh, 17 euros a kilo um sausage there three packets for 10 uh in finland um this is a local producer, so there'll be 90% meat in those sausages. Um, bacon, uh, three packets for 10 euros. Um, uh, some more pork, um, six euros a kilo. So what we're saying here is that if you can cook from scratch, oh, here's another one here, beef, uh, beef mince, uh, 10 euros a kilo. And you can either get that with 10% fat or 15% fat. And notice there's no price difference for that. So again, for me, what this indicates is that many Finns have sussed out that um, fat is a good thing. There's no price discount on the fattier uh, mince meat. And then just to give you an idea here, um, beer. Um, so 30 euros for 24 tins. This is pretty good beer. Um, so that works out to £24 for a case, which I think is probably cheaper now than the UK. This is a very, very good brand. It used to be brewed in Porry. So what we're saying here is that it's possible. I can see signs and symptoms here of this change, this change in consumer taste towards animal protein and animal fat, which is great news. And then also the crucial thing to say is that what's... What's going to happen is that the health of Finns is going to improve. If more people are eating a proper human diet that's based on animal proteins and animal fats, there'll be less diabetes in Finland. There'll be less obesity in Finland. There'll be fewer heart attacks and strokes in Finland. This is all good news because it's carbohydrates and sugars that cause all of those health problems. Oh yeah, the one that I forgot, of course, is... Um, is uh, cancer that's also cancer cells um, basically grow they, they metabolize sugar and sugar that breaks down from carbohydrates so if you eliminate those from your diet then that's good so um, from the point of view of the big club um, they will be hating on this um, because they want fewer of us they believe that the um, there's too many people on the planet uh, to achieve sustainable development. We need smaller populations, which basically means um, fewer births and or more deaths. That's what they want. So you can see. And also they want demoralized people that are easier to manage and control. So uh, people that are unhealthy tend to be easier to manage and control than uh, compared to people who are um, full of vitality because they're eating a diet rich in animal protein and animal fat. Um, remember too that cholesterol is used by the, do your own research on this by the way, but cholesterol is used to produce vitamin D in the body. Um, cholesterol is also used to produce um, um, sex hormones, so in men, testosterone, in women, estrogen. So think about the big club. Do they want men with, who are high in testosterone? Do they want women who are kind of um, going to be extremely fertile because they've got normal levels of uh, estrogen? Of course they don't. So this is why they've been pushing you know, vegan and vegetarianism and trying to get you to take that drug that sounds like Satan's, that, that actually lowers cholesterol. Um, cholesterol is also important uh, in terms of uh, generating a healthy uh, Im immune response. Uh, so there's, there's loads and loads of things that uh, high cholesterol is actually a good thing, not a bad thing. Um, so basically, look, this is very, very bad news for the big club, that people are rumbling them. You know, um, I, I think, you know, people like me making videos about the health, you know, health benefits of switching from high carbohydrate, high sugar diet to uh, a natural human diet. And people are noticing it. People are asking about it and then they're trying it out for themselves. Uh, these other people like Dave Mack, Low Carb Life, 
he's got like over a thousand interviews with people like me who've transformed their lives by changing their diet. So this information that the big club has hidden for many, many years is now coming out into the open and we're seeing it through changes in consumption patterns. Like, um, the other thing I'm gonna uh, post up now, um, it's a podcast and um, it, it contains just loads of hard statistical data. Uh, for example, that um, breakfast cereal, breakfast cereal consumption is in decline. That's bad news for the big club because um, starting off your, uh, your day eating carbohydrates is going to cause a blood sugar spike and that, that blood sugar spike is going to get your body to secrete insulin and insulin is a fat storage hormone. So yeah, you can understand why people who eat carbohydrates tend to get fat because you know, lots of carbohydrates break down into sugar. Sugar requires the body to create insulin um, to get the blood sugar down again. When the blood sugar falls, you suddenly feel hungry again. So this is why when I used to eat um, pasta, rice, bread, breakfast cereals sometimes, porridge certainly, I used to feel you know, pleasant maybe about half an hour after I've eaten it, maybe an hour and a half, start to feel ravenously hungry again. So what people are doing, again, um, this is data that relates to Britain, incidentally, um, despite all the crap about uh, all the adverse publicity from the NHS that you shouldn't eat eggs because it, it raises your cholesterol, you, you know, you shouldn't eat eggs, it's bad, bad for you, you know, give, can give you heart attacks and stuff. People are ignoring it and um, all, you know, all that kind of crap about bird flu. Despite all of this, the massive increase in the price of eggs caused by them killing off birds in places like Britain and America, egg consumption in the last year has increased by 20% in Britain. So this tells me that the big club are losing the info war. That 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 information about uh, a proper human diet is leaking out into normie world. Now here's some more kind of, if that's not good enough, you know, that normies are gonna be living uh, uh, for longer and, um, and whilst they're alive, healthier lives too. If that's not bad enough for the big club, I think what's gonna happen is that many normies, once they've transformed their health by changing what they eat, and ditching the carbs and the sugars and going for animal protein and animal fat, they're gonna be astounded by what happens to their own health. And they're gonna get pretty angry about what their GPs have been saying. The truth is gonna come out about cholesterol. Um, latest studies have shown that the higher your cholesterol is, the greater your life expectancy. I'll just put a, a, a screenshot of some research. You know, also um, the, the, the so-called health benefits of these Satan's uh, drugs, hugely profitable by the way, um, that is also gonna come out into the open. It's, or it is already beginning to come out into the open. So once people start to question all of this, and they already are, and I know that because we can see these behavior changes taking place. Remember, ignore what people say to you around the water cooler, just focus on what they do. If they're buying more eggs, if they're buying more meat, that tells me that they know. Yeah, can forget the fact that they're cowards and they won't speak up, just watch what they do, what they, watch what they spend their own money on. And um, yeah, they might start to question other stuff, you know, the diet and fitness and the lousy NHS healthy eating advice and, you know, these drugs that they've been prescribing people en masse. The truth about all of this will encourage greater truth seeking from, from normies. And um, yeah, people are waking up. One more time, they're waking up because you can see it from their own behavior, um, what they're buying and what they're not buying. So that's all I want to say today. Yeah, so I'm at the...
the football ground. It's, they should be like doing some renovation work on here, but I can see absolutely zero sign of this happening at the moment. But anyway, that's all I want to say today, so God bless.